A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. For this reason, I remind you to steer into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So, do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design. And the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed. And I am confident that he is able to guide what has been entrusted to me until that day. Responsorial Psalm To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you I lift up my eyes who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this request of him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, Whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead bringing raised, have you not read the book of Moses? In the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. How reliable is the belief that all will be raised from the dead? The Sadducees, who were a group of religious leaders from upper 
classes in Jesus' time did not believe in the bodily resurrection of the dead to eternal life. They could not conceive of heaven beyond what they could see with their naked eyes. Aren't we often like them? We don't recognize spiritual realities because we try to make heaven into an earthly image we can touch and see. The Sadducees came to Jesus with a test question to make the resurrection look ridiculous. The Sadducees, unlike the Pharisees, did not believe the existence of immortal beings, whether humans, angels, or evil spirits. The religion was literally grounded in an earthly image of heaven, which ended in death. Jesus responds to their argument by dealing with the fact of the resurrection and immortal life. Jesus shows that God is a living God of a living people. The scriptures give proof of it. In Exodus, God calls himself the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God was a friend of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when they lived in the earth. That friendship with God could not cease with death. David in the Psalms also speak of the reality of immortal life with God. Let us pray. May the Lord Jesus put his hands on our eyes also, for then we too shall begin to look not at what is seen, but at what is not seen. May he open the eyes that are concerned, not with the present, but with what is yet to come. May he unseal the heart's vision that we may gaze on God in the Spirit, through the same Lord, Jesus Christ, whose glory and power will endure throughout the unending succession of ages. Amen. Mm -hmm.